Yo, what's going on? Welcome to the channel. My name is Coulter. I make videos to help people become who they want to be and do what they do through self-improvement, productivity, discipline, etc., etc., while also documenting my own journey of doing the same thing. So if that sounds like something interesting to you, scroll down right now, hit the subscribe button. I'm sure you'll find something of value on this channel. Appreciate it. Let's get to the topic today. So the topic today is self-sabotage and complacency. I face both Tons of times in my life, whether it's through music, I used to make a lot of beats, I still want to work into that, but right now I'm focused a lot more on self-improvement, but whether it was with making beats, my old YouTube channels, just any, any, any endeavor I ever went into, a lot of the time I would find myself quitting, and, and it was often short of my potential. I would, I would reach some kind of success, I would reach something that kind of made me feel like I was making progress, and something in me would say, slow the fuck down bro i i'm not i'm not ready for this you're not ready for this you know and and one thing that i want to say here is a lot of the time when you hear those doubts you hear those thoughts come into your mind that 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 make you feel like you can't do something cuz i promise you you can you'd be very surprised at at the amount of success that that you have within you that you can actually go out and achieve like the things that you can go out and achieve you'd be very surprised at what level you can get to if you just apply yourself and go for it but a lot of the times when you hear these doubts you hear these things in your head it it often comes from things that people have maybe said to you things that you've heard about yourself maybe people have said things behind your back that came back around to you and you heard and you almost internalize it and then when you say it in your head you're saying it in your own voice so a lot of the times that the, the things that are said in your own voice in your head aren't actually from you you're speaking to yourself from someone else's point of view and and the way that that kind of messes with your brain and the way that that sets you up to, to fail it's not real the a lot of the doubts that you have are not real they're not actually uh, they shouldn't actually be an issue for you but you make them an issue for yourself and with self-sabotage, with complacency, they're both processes of the ego. They're both a way for your ego to avoid failure. Your, your ego doesn't want to take the hit and, and feel like an actual failure. So with self-sabotage, you stop early of your potential. And, and with that, you, you don't actually have to face true failure. But, but that's an issue because with failure, failure is, failure is growth. By failing, you learn and you grow. Failure is synonymous with growth which is a precursor to success, right? So, so to be able to actually have success, you have to fail and, and your ego doesn't want to fail. Your ego doesn't want to have that failure on it. On, it doesn't want to have that weight on its shoulders. So it does anything to stop you from that. So there's self-sabotage or complacency. Your mind almost tricks you into thinking that you're happy with where you're at, even though on one side, you, you know that you're not happy with where you're at. You know that you can do better. You know that you want more for yourself. So, so what are those two sides to yourself? You know, people say you have the, the devil and the, and the angel, right? The, those two sides that you can hear speaking to yourself, that's your ego and the actual you, the observer of the ego, the observer of whatever thoughts you're having. So complacency and self-sabotage are both just two sides of the same coin. They're both ways for your ego to avoid failure, but one of them is making you feel like you're too good for that. You're, you're already there. You're already satisfied. You're already content with where you're at. You're making do just fine. You're make, you're working through it. You're getting by just fine. So why do any more? Or you're already, you're seeing a little bit of success and, and you're not ready for it. So you say, no, I'm going to stop here so that I can't get far enough to fail. So on one hand, you feel like you're, you're, you don't, you're not good enough. So you stop. Or, on the other hand, you feel too good, so there's no reason to keep going. It's really, really frustrating because it's a paradox where you, you know that you want to continue, but something in you is pulling you back, and that something is your ego. And a lot of the time, with both of these things, they're coupled with feelings of inadequacy. Even if you are satisfied, and even if you're content, even if you're stopping early because of it's, it's a complacency issue, a lot of the time it is still a feeling of inadequacy, a feeling of, I, I can't do this, so I won't, but I'm okay with that. Even if you're not okay with that, it's a very weird process that goes on in your mind. And I know because I've been through it tons of times myself. And in the past, I've started many YouTube channels. Even when I was young, I was like 10 years old starting my, my Call of Duty commentaries, or when I was 
probably a little bit older, like 14-ish, I was I started like League of Legends videos. And both of those I was making I was making good progress. At the beginning I was 10 years old. This was in 2009 and I had like a thousand subscribers and for for that time period, that was quite a few people, especially for doing Call of Duty commentaries where where it wasn't super super common yet. That was something where I could have definitely taken that a lot further, but I stopped because I was on one hand, I was afraid of judgment, so it was like a self-sabotage. I didn't want to face that judgment, so I, I pulled back on my own accord. But also, I, I went into it thinking, like, I don't... Uh, this isn't necessarily something that I 100% want, because I there's so many things that I don't want to have to deal with in that space. So I decided I was okay with where I... With, just stopping. I'm complacent in that, but also I was sabotaging myself by by facing that, by by pulling that into my psyche, right? So it's they they go so hand in hand. Like I said, two sides of the same coin. And then moving forward into the League of Legends videos, I was doing even better there. I had about 10,000 subscribers and I was I was making money off it this time. So I was seeing real success there and it was that one was more so self-sabotage. That one was more so like I, I didn't want to face actual failure, I didn't want to face any judgment from people at school, from peers, from anything like that, even though all the comments on those videos would be people saying, you've really helped me here, I appreciate what you're doing here, you're, you're, the way you speak really connects the dots for me and the way that you're, you're, you're explaining concepts in the game really, really helped me. Even though I was seeing all these comments, any comment that I saw that was an issue, like any comment that I saw that was even constructive criticism, if it was criticism in any form, it would take a huge hit to my ego. My ego is very fragile. And again, your ego does not want to face that failure. So with self-sabotage and with complacency, they're both, again, two sides of the same coin. I can't say that enough. And when it comes to getting over complacency, getting over self-sabotage, I've I've found for me it comes to it comes to two things. There's two ways that you can go through this and honestly they work best when you do them both hand in hand. So with the first option, the first thing is going to be mindfulness. This is something I talk about so often because mindfulness will literally make you better in every aspect of your life. Literally every possible area of your life, mindfulness will help you. And with self-sabotage and complacency, the reason it'll help you is because you'll start to recognize when these thoughts come up. With mindfulness, the way you practice it, you can do it just throughout your day. You could, while you're doing the dishes, focus on the actual motion of doing the dishes. Or when you're, I don't know, it, it's, there's, there's, it's literally any, like in this particular moment while I'm filming this video, I am mindful of just where I am. I'm sitting here, I, I feel my feet on the floor. One of my feet, my right foot, is a little bit more pressured down than, than my left foot. My left foot is, has a lot more freedom to like lift up if I wanted to. My, my elbow is resting here on this armrest. My back is kind of like, it's just being in your body, being here now, like really thinking about that and understanding where you are. And being a really good thing that I've heard with it is being the watcher. Of, of your thoughts, being the, being the observing entity behind all your thoughts, because it puts you one level up, right? It puts you one level above. And a really great book for this is The Power of Now. The Power of Now is super, super great if you want to get into mindfulness and meditation. Meditation is the other way that you can really, really practice it. A lot of people say meditation doesn't work for them, and it's, it's weird because meditation works for everyone, but everyone goes at their own pace and everyone learns differently and everyone meditates differently. So again, meditation is again, just being mindful of where you're at, but now you're doing it with no distractions and you're doing it in a way that's like, you're not actually doing anything. You're just sitting and you're experiencing life as it is without any distractions. There's nothing actually blocking you from, from, understanding what's going on and hearing your thoughts. So your thoughts will come up and then you usually won't notice that you've started thinking until you have that realization that you were thinking. And when you realize that, it brings you back to the moment and then again, your, your mind will trail off again and then you come back. And that practice, it, it basically teaches you to do that when any thoughts come up. So now, if those thoughts of self-sabotage, those thoughts of complacency, those thoughts of doubt, those worries, they come into your psyche, they come into your thoughts, your, those thought processes start to happen, you can recognize it, 
and just stop. And it sounds super, super simple because it is, but it's not an easy thing to do. That's something, that's one of my like favorite sayings and quotes. I'm not actually sure where it came from, but the things that matter the most are, are although they're never easy, they are very, very simple. So with mindfulness, it is a very simple process. It's just not easy to do. And mindfulness will help you again in every area of your life, but particularly anything that will anything that has to do with your mind and your thought processes and, and getting behind the inner workings of them, getting behind the surface level of your thoughts. So mindfulness is going to be huge for getting through with self-sabotage and complacency and those feelings of doubt and worry. But the other thing, if you want like something practical, because I, I always hate when... When, when YouTubers talk about something like this and then peace out, like <laughs> they're done, they tell you what the issue was and then and then they just kind of leave it there. So one of my like actual practices that I've been doing to kind of get through this is it's something I call tree goals. Now with tree goals, let me explain the concept. So tree goals, you got the trunk, right? Your trunk is your main goal. You're like your main thing. So for me, for example, I have many of them, but let's say this one that I'm going to talk about now is fitness. My, my goal with fitness is a particular, a particular body type, particular body fat percentage, particular weight. It has to be very, very specific. I have it written down on a paper over here that, 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 hey, that makes it very, very particular, but your main goal is almost an identity. It's almost the, the actual person that you want to be when you've achieved whatever this goal is. And then from there you have your branches in your tree right and your branches are all the smaller goals that will lead into this big goal right so you have your your main goal the trunk your branches which are you know your your mini goals and then if your tree doesn't have leaves your it's not dead your dream isn't dead but it's dormant and and the leaves of your tree those are the actual actions your daily actions your your weekly actions that you have to do on a consistent basis to make those to, to bring those to fruition, right? To, to bring your actual main trunk, main goal to fruition. So by having a bunch of different tree goals that you've set for yourself, and usually for myself, I like to set them in, in terms of the mind, the body, and the soul. So if you have a, a tree goal for your mind, a tree goal for your body, and a tree goal for your soul, with soul, it's really just about feeling fulfilled, just fulfillment in general. When you have one goal for each of those. I don't like to go over one for each of those. So I have three main goals at any given time. And with those, you can set them up in such a way that now you have these goals and you have the mini goals that relate to it and you have the actual actions. And so with complacency, if you have these tree goals and, and you've, you've achieved, let's say you've achieved all of your mini goals and now that means you've achieved your main goal. So now you have this tree, right? and you're always planting new ones. Throughout your journey, you're gonna be planting new trees all the time. And that means that you can never become complacent because there's always more to do. There's always more that you're working towards because life is this long ass journey, right? And, and you're never done. Like you never, you've never achieved enough until time is up, until the world says that you're done, right? So you can never be complacent if you have all of these different goals and you have to continue to nurture these things, right? So maybe you have achieved all of your little goals and you've achieved this main goal but that doesn't mean that you're done with that main goal you still have to constantly tend to that main goal even if you've now planted a new tree you have a new main goal in in let's say you have a new main goal in terms of your body that doesn't mean that the other main goal is now going back to being dormant you still have to continue to to tend to it and that's what growing is right you've you're growing this this field of different trees that's a it's an analogy that i like to use it works for me and i'm hoping it also works for you and then with self sabotage as well the it with self sabotage it is more the mindfulness as opposed to the tree goals but having those goals front of mind will definitely help you with with self sabotage because like i said with self sabotage it's a it's it's stopping early of failure you don't want to experience that failure but it's it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter that you don't want to experience that failure. Failure, like I said, is a precursor. It's a prerequisite to growth. To grow, you need to fail. So if, if failure is a prerequisite to growth and growth is a prerequisite to success, you have to fail to reach success. So it's, 
that that's one that's going to be more mindfulness. It's going to be more catching yourself when those thoughts do arise, when those doubts happen, when those worries come up. But but with complacency, always having goals front of mind is going to be one of your best friends. It's going to be one of the best ways to to keep on track and keep going towards what you're working towards. So that like that's what's worked for me, and hopefully it'll also work for you. I hope I, I did a good enough job of explaining this, kind of working through it for you, explaining how I think about this, and hopefully I've changed your perspective in some way. Hopefully I've said something that kind of shifts your mind and, and kind of makes you think at least, or maybe I've, I've jump-started you and you go and start doing something now. So I really appreciate you watching the video. If you did enjoy how I spoke about this, what I spoke about, please scroll down and subscribe. Hit the notification bell, you'll be notified anytime that I upload a video. And if you did like how I spoke in this video, I'm sure you'll find more value in upcoming videos or in past videos. And I'm trying to be a YouTuber, so I'm going to do the YouTuber stuff at the end here. Leave a like, leave a comment. Uh, I'm definitely down to have a conversation. If you want any clarification on something I might have said or uh, just want to ask me a question that's maybe not related, totally down to have a conversation in the comment section below. Uh, right now I do have, um, right now I do have like a newsletter that I made, so it's through Substack, you can click on the link in the description, and basically it's, it's my written form ideas from each video, because I don't, I don't have a script for these videos, so I just kind of say what it's, on, what it's on my mind, but before I do that, I do write a full, like, blog post, essentially, about the topic, just to get my mind and my, my thoughts kind of organized before I sit down and do the video. So I take those blog posts and I send them out as emails. So with those emails, they'll come straight to your email, It's or you can just look at it directly on the Substack page, I believe. I'm not 100% sure how it works, but... It's, it's there, so you can subscribe to that. It's 100% free. And then also, I do one-to-one -one coaching, so if you want help one-to-one -one about something particular to you and your life, um, you can check that out. It's on. I do it through Fiverr right now. I'm going to try and get my own website, but for now, Fiverr's the way I do it. I really appreciate you watching the video. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.